But first, I'm joined by Eyewitness News reporter Steve Nielsen. Steve, you had the unique perspective today. You actually were at the State House and at Gordon Fox's home. What was going on? Well, you know, it was really surreal, honestly, Mike. You know, I was there with uh, WPRI.com reporter Dan McGowan. Him and I were some of the first reporters there at the State House. And, you know, here you are in front of the office of the man who's typically called one of the most powerful politicians in the state, the Speaker of the House, and it's blocked off completely by state police. The door was still open at that point as state police were in front of the door. There we were, rumors started to swirl from everyone about what could possibly happen that would cause state police to swarm the Speaker's office. And then after about an hour, the IRS walked down the hallway and through the door. That's when the tone changed. The door was kept shut at that point as a stream of investigators worked. So we couldn't see what was going on inside at that point. Speaker Fox's spokesperson was there inside. He said state police then asked him to leave the office and that Fox was not there at the time. There was a lot of investigators there from several agencies, the IRS state police and some people who were not wearing any uniforms at all so tough to tell at that point where they were from at one point I actually got into an elevator with an investigator from the FBI but she like all the other investigators there would not comment on anything so after I stayed at the State House for a few hours trying to uncover information track down anybody who could possibly comment on this major story eyewitness news reporter Sean Daly stayed there at the scene as I then headed to Fox's home as I pulled up to his east side home eyewitness news reporter Susan Campbell just witnessed this scene that you're looking at a long stream of investigators carrying boxes out of the speaker's house speaker fox was not inside his home during this and uh it was as though uh as he was trying to track down how power excuse me we were trying to track down where this powerful politician was but just a few minutes after investigators left the scene i witnessed a car stop in front of the home speaker fox got out he ran inside he never even turned back to acknowledge that reporters were there asking him questions he was dressed pretty casually mike and, you know, I just left that home a little while ago. Eyewitness News reporter Jared Planner is outside trying to get answers right now as Speaker Fox is presumably still inside of his home. All right. Steve Nielsen, thank you very much for that perspective of what happened at the State House and Speaker Fox's home. Let's bring in now WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi with more on the State House search. Ted, we reported uh, earlier that a Democratic caucus is now being held right now. So rumors obviously are swirling about what could happen for leadership at the State House. What can you tell us right now? Yeah, Mike, the word bombshell is overused probably in the news business, but there's really no other way to describe today's developments. As Steve just said, Speaker of the House is really often called the most powerful political position in Rhode Island because of the huge Democratic majorities in the General Assembly and because Rhode Island has a weak governor's office constitutionally. But there's really two stories here. There's the investigation that's led to these searches of House Speaker Ford and Fox's home, and then there's the political fallout. I've been talking to state lawmakers all afternoon. They tell me that almost as soon as Dan McGowan first reported that Fox's office was being searched, the phone calls started flying about what to do this morning, and ambitious politicians have been jockeying all day for position if Fox decides to resign. Now, House Majority Leader Nick Mattiello, a Cranston Democrat, he's been widely seen as a likely successor to Fox, someone with maybe the inside edge, and as Marilyn Chair reported at five, he's currently holding a caucus at the Marriott in Providence. But I've also spoken to lawmakers who say they have no plans to attend. And Nick Mattiello's caucus. In fact, uh, both House Majority Whip Stephen Ucci, a member of leadership, and State Rep Michael Marcello told me they wouldn't be going. Marcello indicating he might seek the speakership himself. So it's really a very fluid situation. It came as a shock to everyone at the State House this morning when these uh, searches began. But now all eyes in the next few days are really going to be on Gordon Fox himself and what will he decide to do? Does he decide to step aside, as some, including Cranston Mayor Alan Fung and State Rep John Lombardi, have already called on him? to do or does he try to hold out because unless he decides to resign he will remain the speaker through the end of this year so we're, we're tracking all of this and we'll have much more on the political fallout of the state house search coming up on eyewitness news live at 6 30 on fox providence all right ted thank you very much